happy that uh, Hakim is working on increasing airlift. That's very important. Okay. And we have to get more flights in. We have so many hotel rooms. We have 5,000 hotel rooms. If you want to fill them, we have to get more people to the island. Okay. That's it. Very so important. So how, what is the occupancy now in general here? Well, actually, uh, uh, November was very good. Uh, November finished up somewhere in the 70 percent. Uh, the first couple of weeks of December is always low, so we'll see how it now how it goes now. But we need about 70 percent. Yeah. Okay. And are you are you gonna, gonna going to get it? Yes, we are getting. It. Is the forecast okay? Yes. yes. But I also know that like the new hotels, like the Hyatt, they're suffering very badly. You know, they're, they're having a very very difficult time. Oh. Too uh, large, maybe. I hear that. Well, too large, and, and also the price level. Don't forget, you may have occupancy, but it also, are they paying $200 for a room, or are they paying $50 for a room? It's a big difference, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Okay, mm -hmm. back to Gert Wilders. Right. Gert, uh, can you explain it to us, the neuro and the euro, why is it necessary to, sp to speak about a different currency? Okay. In Europe, we have the euro. Right? And we have the Euro countries, and there are a couple of Euro countries in Greece, in Italy, and a little bit in Spain. So in the south, three countries. And the governments borrowed a lot of money. Now, there's nothing wrong with borrowing money. If you can borrow money for, let's say, 4%, and you can make 5%, everybody is happy because you make money with the money, with the money you borrow. But if you don't work and just go to the shop and spend the money on consumption, you don't produce anything, then it's a sick situation. Okay. Then your economy, you're eating up the money you borrow. And that is what has happened in Greece. There were too many people doing nothing. Okay. And the government kept on borrowing money and they were financing everything in the country, and nobody was producing any. The production was shrinking. And that's why we have the danger okay. in southern Europe, in Greece, in Italy, and in Spain. You had a shrinking economy. So at a certain point, when you keep eating up and spending the money on consumption, you run out of money. Okay, but then and then you have to borrow money, and you go to the countries where they make money. So they borrowed money from Germany and Holland and all these countries. And that is, at a certain point, you say, now you have to start producing again. You have to start working so you make money so you can pay your interest. Very simple. OK, but will it come or can it come to a point that there is no more money for these countries? And uh... No. We have already seen that with the measures that uh, uh, the new Papadimos, the new prime minister of Greek, took. You see that suddenly the productivity of Greece is coming up so that they can pay their debts. It's very good. So that has already happened. We have seen exactly the same in Italy. The productivity is coming up because of certain measures. Mm. And a lot of people are suddenly saying, oh, we should stop with the euro because it's too dangerous. And it's just a... Like Geert Wilders. Geert Wilders is an idiot. But anyway, did he doesn't understand, and he is from the old school, when you have national debt, you create inflation. Yeah, you have a monetary system, you do monetary easing, and you do inflation, and before you know it, you don't have any debt anymore, because the, you know, the, the, the amount stays the same, and you print new money. That's a monetary system. And we have changed from a monetary supply system to a fiscal. We say, no, you have to charge taxes to pay your debt. Okay. And you can only charge taxes when you have productivity and make profit. Okay. So people go to work. Okay, but the I problem is not printing money. The problem is getting people to go back to production. All of this benefits the United States of America. I understand that the banks in America learn uh, um, lending money to the banks in Southern Europe. Well, there's a balance of trade at the moment, right? And the balance of trade with the United States is still in the favor of Europe. Let's not forget the gross domestic product of the EU is about 16, 17 trillion a year, and of 
the United States is only 13 and a half trillion. Uh, it's, it, Europe is still larger than the United States. And yes, it goes back and forth, and then you have a, what we call a balance of trade. Okay. We look at it. So and you're saying this is temporary? It's temporary, you know, it goes up and down. Come on. Okay, but the Neuro is just fiction? <clears throat> it's fiction from people who are thinking in, think of the horrible years of the 60s and the 70s. We had 10 lost years of superinflation in Europe. We have an interest rate of 10 to 12 percent. It was all inflation, and they're still thinking in terms of the 70s. Mm -hmm. They're thinking in monetary terms. So no risk and for the euro, in, no risk for the European Union. Listen, we have to think in fiscal terms and productivity. Italy, Greece, Spain has to go back to work and stop siestas, right? They're sitting there eating and drinking day and night, and they never work. Of course. And they don't pay their taxes because they have a black money economy. That has to stop. That is the problem. Do you compare what's <clears throat> happening in Greece and Italy with what happened here? No. At the moment, our productivity... No, not at the moment. Before 10, 10, 10. The fact that Holland had to pay the, our debt. Yes, of course. Totally. It's, it's, uh... Totally the same. We did not produce enough to pay our debt. Yep. So Holland said at the certain point, okay, let's forget about it. Let's all wipe it off the table. We pay the debt. But from now on, you have to balance your books. And you have to go to work and pay your taxes. Okay, we're going to jump from Holland to Africa. Good. I placed <clears throat> one picture of you uh, sitting with some boys. Right. That, and your description was that these boys were being trafficked. They were slaves, right. and you said that it is a some uh, huge amount of people are being trafficked. Right. Can you? Well, it, at this time of the year, we all eat chocolate, and the chocolate comes from West Africa, from the, the, the what is called Ivory Coast, the country of Ivory Coast and Ghana. They produce all the Belgium chocolate. Belgium makes makes chocolate. Belgium, Holland, actually Holland is the largest, and then Belgium all there. But they buy cocoa, you know, the, the, the bean, yes. and the beans have to be picked. And they are picked from the plantation, and they're picked by children. So every year, about 100,000 children. Why, why children? It's the cheapest. Oh, okay. It's very, there's, there's, they don't get any money. They, they take street children from uh, Bobo Diolasi or, you know, one of Wagadudo, one of the big cities. They take street children, they kidnap them, and they put them on the plantation to pick. And, and so it's pure slavery. They, they buy the kids, um, then they use cyanide as an insecticide on these plantations. So these kids get a lot of cyanide, and most of them die after a year. Yeah? It's a so horrible situation. This has been going on how long? Uh, for as long as I know, and it was actually President Bush. Whether you like him or not, Bush said to Ivory Coast, if you do not stop this, I will not allow any import of chocolate into the United States. It has to be, this has to stop. So now it changed a lot since Bush put up that rule. And as of two years ago, it's a lot better. So it's, it's a big diminishing market, but still in Africa, let's not forget about a million people every year are sold in the in agriculture, in plantations, mm -hmm. for picking the stuff because that we the, like so much. What is the world doing about this? What is the what? What is the world doing about this? Well, it, again, we have the, the chocolate forum uh, actually in the United Nations. Uh, we have the United Nations Committee to Supervise Slavery, but again, the Western world prefers cheap chocolate. <laughs> so they keep buying it. And they keep buying it, and they keep sponsoring West African slavery. Why, why doesn't the United Nations just uh, put pressure on all of these countries to stop it? No, I mean, no in United your opinion, Nations, no. is there United, United Nations is doing everything. Just go to the internet, go to UNESCO, go to slavery, go to the cocoa. You know, you can find tons and tons of information and supervision. But are and you other. satisfied with, the, with what is being done against no, it? No, because here, at the moment, we have a lot of noise. Like in, in Europe, in the supermarkets, they sell chocolate. And everybody's saying, oh, we have to get slavery clean chocolate. And less than 3% is selling it. 
97% of all the chocolate sold in Europe and the United States is from plantations contaminated with tens of thousands of children working in slavery. And cyanide. And cyanide being poisoned. Horrible, horrible situation. Okay. Um, the children <clears throat> you were in the picture with, uh, yes. they were um, saved from all of that. Well, what we did in our organization... Who does that? Well, we set up an organization, and this was in this situation in Burkina Faso, and we have people at the border. You see, they're being kidnapped. They give them some Valium, a little beer. They put them in a truck or in a bus, and they ship them to Ivory Coast or Ghana. So we have people at the border post just checking all the buses and checking all the trucks to make sure that somewhere they don't have a lot of kids. And we catch them all the time. See? Mm -hmm. and, and that's how we get them released. We, we come with the United Nations troops, actually. Uh, we come with supervisors, we come with the government, we come with the police. The, the whole thing... When you say we, is there one... The organization... Person? No, the, this, uh, this is through United Nations and through UNESCO. Okay. I work, as you know, uh, as ambassador for United Nations. Okay. Um, how many people, how many children are we talking about? Well, from Burkina Faso only... It's already 40,000 children per year. 40,000 children per year. That's one country. So in total, we don't know exactly, but the estimate last year was between three and 400,000 children. Oh, oh. Okay, but this is just Burkina Faso? That's what no, you no. Said? It's the whole West Coast between three and 400,000 children. Every year. Almost half a million. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable, and it's disgusting that the you world is not stepping up. You want to that there are more slaves today, at this moment, on the planet, than there were in the whole 200 years oh, absolutely. of transatlantic at, slave trade? At the moment, you see, like I told you about it, in Sudan, 1986, they reintroduced slavery. You can sell people at every gas station in all of Sudan and Mauritania. Okay, Holland, the representative of Holland, the yes. ex-representative of right. Holland, told me once, or right. a girl working in yeah. there that picked yeah. up the phone, when I said, when I spoke to her about slavery in Holland, right. she said, well, you know, and everybody knows that it is because of the Antilles. What is your reaction to well, that? Well, that I don't know. There, there, there are some accusations made, but what we know, at least for sure. Well, it's not just some accusations, well, because <clears throat> the um, State Department yes. is also accusing the interior well, of that. Again, I don't know. Uh, maybe true, maybe not true. I often hear that here in Curaçao, there are a lot of domestics, domestics from, I don't know, the other islands or from Colombia, whatever, and the children do not go to school. And the, the domestics who work here in a situation do not get normal pay. And there is a very murky situation that looks like slavery. Have I investigated it? No. Whose function is it to investigate? The government. And if the government doesn't do it, United Nations, UNESCO has an office here and they are reporting on it. Okay. Okay, we'll <coughs> go to some commercials again. Good. Um nosta queda, nosta bem back um bes, nos invitado ta Señor Jacob Geldecker, queda con nosotros, nos trabaja con mes. Uf, this is... El programa número un de su horario, Tour a Tardi, sin cor, aquí en la canal de Zoom, está Pro Info Criollo. Presenta para Francis Matilda y Hervi Bernardo, que tour día un tópico y invitado, que está así a abonos del evidente, más sabí cual era. A ver, con una innovación completa y con orgullo, Curaçao Marmar está procesada de piedra de Newport, según la técnica de Marmar, para destacar nuestro producto único y mostrar que no está en el puerto. Si hay piedra de Curaçao, o con Marmar importa, Curaçao Marmar está en nuestra comunidad una opción nunca antes disponible. Drenta en el mundo de Curaçao Marmar, visita nuestro showroom en Santa Rosa Vej, o llama 736-4155. Cura Salmar, vos sonho na realidade.
Passa um rato ameno com família, desfrutando tudo de luna até de viernes na Happy Hour. Começando por 5 horas de tarde, tem com 7 horas de noite. Já mais All You Can Eat Buffet. Já webs Live Music. Já sabe Live Mexican Music. E já domingo, muito até comer por nada. Tem com 10 dos anos. E no Lube da Riba, na Daily Fresh Salad Bar. Rodeo House of Ribs. Abre tour dia, por 5 horas de tarde, tem com 10 horas de noite. Telefone 560 Of 465 Rodeo House of Ribs. The real action begins. Oh. You have no idea. O quatro sucursal sempre tem um movie box banda vivo. Por devolver vídeo na de qualquer dinâmica. Por se mãe, película na novo novo personal e serviço total. Vou braço para para mira e promo. Também vou snack favorito e sempre um movie box banda vivo. South Ribs, bem passa um rato ameno com família. De... Sempre que o Movie Box banda de Olimpia, Olympia, Run, Ride, Swim and Gym. Nós está aqui da Riba Caracas, vai ver? Banda de The Movie Box. <música> Mr. Back, we're back in contact and our guest is Jacob Kaldekar. We have uh, a caller. Hello? Hello. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Kaldekar, I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. Um, have you heard of the, of the new law that wheels have set about, uh, it's called the 80-20 rule? Is regarding... Um, of course I've heard about it, yeah. What, what's your opinion about it? Because I personally think um, it's, a good, uh, it's a good rule to implement um, the people's spirit so, um, to start working, you know, instead of making people from abroad. Um, I think it's a good rule, but at the same time, I think it's, um, the government is, uh, it's putting too much, it's, how do you say it in, um, in English? Um, I think I'm just my hobby. Well, say it again. Right, right, right. The government is meddling too much in private sector. Uh, Listen, it, it, 
I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. The, Thank the, you. My point is very simple. In, in our business, in the hotel business, we don't have an 80 20 rule, we have a 95 5 rule. <laughs> right? Okay, so more even. It's the service industry needs local people. That's how you function. You cannot function. I mean, it's not the kind of industry where you have that. Okay. But of course, there's another industry where you have highly specialized people, you can, simply cannot find them. So I'm only saying that, that in some industries, it's a good rule, and in some industries, it's totally impossible. Okay. It's silly. And, it's, and I agree with the caller saying the, the government is, is putting too much in. It's too political. They made something political and popularized it, but it's not very well thought out. So there should be a lot more differentiation and a lot more ability. You would have preferred for this law not to have passed? Well, it, first of all, the law hasn't passed because it has no, not been signed you, into the you, law. Uh, I think, uh, and here I agree with the, I think, the Lawyers Association here in Curaçao, there are already enough laws and regulations that actually have the same effect. Totally the same. So to have an extra law with this 2080 or 9010 or 6040, whatever, is, it, it is, there was no need for it. Okay, but I understand that but there the are. But the point he is, is making, go to work. Go to work. Okay. Yes, go but, to work. But I think Wheels, Wheels was here, yes. sitting where you're yes. sitting, and he was saying there are too many businesses that have too many foreigners. Well, I totally agree. And I think there was already an enough regulation on the books to stop that. There's, there's, we have plenty of regulation to stop that. Foreigners need to have a work permit, as you know. And then simply don't give them a work permit. Mm -hmm. And simply do not allow them to work black. Or and, do and not illegals. prolong them, right? Listen, it, 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 look at the construction industry. We had a lot of people uh, in the construction from Jamaica, from all over the place, totally all, all illegal, it's ridiculous, of course. Mm -hmm. And that should not be. Okay. Absolutely, I totally agree. Okay, well, well, this, this may sound like right. good news to you. Right. Um, the government is saying uh, consumers can sell energy to Aqualectra just by placing these sun panels and then the uh, excess Jacho, energy they... Jacho, listen, what time is it now? It is almost... Ten, nine right, minutes. and it is dark now, right? And we have electrical light, right? And do we get energy from the sun when it's dark at night? No. No. So what are you saying? The it problem is solar energy gives electricity when we don't need it. We don't need it at daytime, we need it at nighttime, and at nighttime we cannot have the moon energy. So, so <laughs> yeah, but it's saying that during the daytime, you can collect the energy. That's the problem. No, you got it right. The, how can we store energy? Of course. We cannot yes. store energy. Nobody has made the invention. When you put the energy into a battery, you lose 80%. See? And when you get it out of the battery, again, into the system, again, you lose 80%. Okay, but then but so can store, we do not have the technology of storage. That is the big problem. At okay, the but can a home or a business yes. produce more than it, what it needs? Well, let's let's if, get back to it. Let's if they can store it, if you cannot store it, forget it. Si, sí, buonanotte. Good evening. Buonanotte, si. You know what happened? Can occur in Kilso. We have plenty of trouble here. Why? Because the government of this my island, and everybody knows in Crystal that the government doesn't do nothing. It's too much in Nika, Haiti, and all the other friends to walk here because the government don't want you to see that. Look, now in Shell, you need 600 people with no people can walk there inside because every people was used on the rocks of our coil. And the government don't want to do nothing. I be a long time, more than 20 years, which is talking to the government. You must do something to stop this thing. Well, I think it should come to the next program, Thank with you. Chacho, so you can do a talk about that together, okay. right? Right. <laughs> I agree. I agree <clears throat> with that. Um, okay, TEDx. Let's go back. We right. just have a couple of minutes more. Um, it's still on. You're going to be going there now. Yes, of course. We'll, we'll be on till midnight. And again, new ideas, and, and it doesn't matter 
that they're conventional or not conventional. We need new ideas in a society okay, but to you be still, productive. You, you stay there for a couple of hours yes, today. Of course, of course. Are they, are, were there highlights? Well, it, it, I find it always fantastic when people have nothing and when they have the courage to do, to make out of nothing something. I mean, we had Joost, who is in a wheelchair, and he could only move one finger, right? And, and he was there to give a talk, and with a little microphone, and he has a business. And mm -hmm. with his one little finger and his wheelchair, he still runs a business. He is not sitting there complaining, no. you know? And that gives me tears in my eyes. Of course. Stop of course. complaining. Go to work. Of course. Okay, but okay, what else <clears throat> was there that, that's worth mentioning now? Oh, I think the that, ideas that were presented. Listen, the, I think it's wonderful. Uh, Tanya Cross, she's doing a new opera, you know that. Yes. Uh, she's using her talent. I mean, here's a great talent, fantastic uh, opera singer. Now, she had a choice. He had a choice never to come back to Curacao and just stay there in Europe and make a lot of money and go to all the big operas, you know, and, and be the big diva. No, what she is doing, she is making an opera of the history of Curacao. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, yes. and she is taking it to the world. I mean, that is literally what we need. We need the experts. We, we have Kilian Walwu, right, mm -hmm. who grew up in Holland, who is now here telling us about the banking and the money system. Of fantastic. Course. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we're getting to very close. You're thinking already of your message to the community? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It is, I mean, the most important thing is break the mold. Stop thinking the old way. Start thinking the new way. Go do it. Stop complaining. But do you feel that people are getting... Yes, they're finally out waking. Out of the yes, box? yes. They're, I mean, it, it is it very is hard. Happening? Listen, it's happening more than ever before. And it's, it, 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 of course, you still have a lot of complaining, a lot of whining, a lot of... and all that stuff. But... Come on, get off your ass, go to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the difference between, um, what, three years, five years ago and today? What's better today in your eyes? We have more young people. Didn't you notice all the baby boomers? We are dying. You know? okay. <laughs> and it's time for us to move out and make space for the new, for people. The new people. And that's okay. fantastic. Of course, we have a graying economy, but the great thing is all the gray hairs are going to be dead in 10 years from now. <laughs> Them. Well, you know. Thank God I'm not. Great. At least we are retired. You know, we are retired. We're gone, and we have a whole new generation. And we have to empower the new generation. Give charge. Let the kids be in charge. Let them go do it. You know, give One them a chance. One last question. People keep asking me. Right. They can. They want to speak to you. Right. What do you want to tell them? Can they just come to you? Can they call Listen, you? Listen, I, I. Are I, you open I, to? I, I do my best. I, I do the social networks as much as I can. Uh, I think everybody knows also in the meantime that I've had her uh, horrible health problems. And I also, you know, I do spend a lot of time in hospitals. And for